Barnes here. Welcome to episode two in the Global Interactions video blog. Today I'm going to talk about measuring global interactions and how we measure global interactions because we've defined globalization, we know what global interactions are, and we need to figure out a way to compare countries. In the IB syllabus, they say that there are two different ways that we can look at how to measure globalizations. One is the AT Kearney Index, and one is the KOF Index. Now, I haven't even found an IB Geography teacher out there who's taught the AT Kearney Index. So basically all of the resources that I'm using, they all teach the, the KOF Index. So that's the one that we're going to look at. And the IB, what they want you to do is they want you to evaluate the KOF Index or the either of the indices. But uh, we're going to look at evaluating the KOF Index. Okay. Um, I tried to make this video once already and it turned out to be way too long, so instead of me saying all the advantages and disadvantages, you can read them yourself in the notes because the notes will be posted in, as a link in the description below the video. There are advantages and disadvantages to both of the indices and so we have to look at why it's easy to uh, compare countries, but why it's difficult to build an index because what do you include, what do you not include, and how do you weight the different variables that you're gonna that you're gonna choose? So, the KOF index. This is just straight from the KOF website. Along the right side of the the, the column here, you can find all the different details about how they uh, determine the style of the 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 index itself. So with the KOF index, they use economic, social, and political globalization. One of my favorites here is they consider the number of McDonald's restaurants in a country. Again, you can get all this information on your own. I'm not going to talk too much about how they uh, weight each of these. And again, it's up for debate whether you should give more weight to the number of McDonald's in a country or more weight to the number of embassies in a country. Okay, so what what do you use to measure globalization? How do you determine which country is more or less globalized than other countries? Okay, if we look at what then comes out of the index and the number that is created, the number closer to 100 would mean that country is more globalized, the number closer to zero would mean the country is less globalized based on the, the index and the computations that you use to, um, to make the variables uh, relevant. And so Ireland is number one in 2005 on the KOF index of globalization. Uh, you'll notice that the top 10 to 20 countries are all uh, pretty well developed countries as far as more economically developed countries goes um, and that's not ironic because all of the things that go into uh, the globalization index are more or less geared towards getting a number that shows that the, the, the globalization of a country is related to its uh, its overall economic situation. So there's a direct correlation. The more globalized the country is, the, uh, the, the better the economic development, the more economically developed the country is. One of the, um, the cool things that they want you to do also is they want you to look, IB, they want you to look at globalization spatially and how countries can be compared. This uh, PowerPoint, this slide share PowerPoint is in the, the notes here. And it shows comparisons between countries over time, and you can click through this and actually take a look at, on your own at your own speed, how countries have become more or less globalized. But one of my favorite things that a teacher has done, the last link here, uh, is they've taken the globalization index and turned it into a GIF. And so, if you go to that that link and then click on this, it will actually run the KOF index uh, uh, over time. So you'll notice that here it started at 1970 and is, is uh, going over time. One thing that I think is really interesting about this is that by 1989-1990 Russia comes into the fold as a result of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And so I think that that's kind of cool. Once it ends you'll notice that there are two main countries that aren't on the 
the KOF index or don't have any data. One of them here is Somalia for obvious reasons, a failed state in a lot of people's eyes. And the other one is North Korea, which chooses to be isolated. They're intentionally isolated. So here we are at 2010. You'll notice that the countries on the planet more or less have become more globalized over time as they integrate into the, uh, the global economic system, as well as all the other factors that are involved, cultural system, social system, environmental system, so on and so forth, global, global systems. And so... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the KOF index. If